Hi everybody, Dominic Esposito, the drill instructor. Welcome to my training studio and I want to share a lesson with you today about defense, your defensive game. Your defensive game is 50%. Offense is the other 50%. But a lot of players don't really take the time to think about building defensive skills. When was the last time you actually had a practice session dedicated to defensive shots? When you don't know defensive shots as a repertoire you're trained with, then it's very easy in the middle of a game to not see that opportunity to lock up your opponent, get ball in hand, and really take better advantage of making the win. Basically, defense is made up of one of two balls. Either you care about exactly what's gonna happen to the cue ball or exactly what's gonna happen to the object ball. And only in the case that I call the ODO, the offense-defense option, where you do care about what happens to both balls, when you're on defense, you only care about what's really gonna happen to this, or this. That's what I want to begin to show you a little bit about today. One of the things players don't understand is what happens to the transfer of energy when the cue ball hits the object ball. This is key for your defensive play because if you're going to care about where the cue ball ends up or the object ball ends up, you need to know something about how energy transfers. If I hit this ball with a pure half ball hit on the cushion, Notice that the distance between how far the object ball moved and the cue ball moved is the same. Notice here what happens on a half ball hit. Again, I'm going to shoot this kind of in, in a gentle way. The distance between how far the object ball moves and the cue ball moves is virtually the same. So as an example, if the cue ball were moving 10 miles an hour when it hit the object ball with a half ball hit, the object ball would begin to move five miles an hour while the cue ball moves away from it at five miles an hour. While the half ball hit with the cue ball and the object ball results in splitting the energy, with a quarter ball hit, we have a different result. Quarter ball hit on the four ball, and the four ball is gonna barely make it to the rail while look where the cue ball is making it, almost all the way down to the other end. So it's three quarters longer fractionally, whatever fractional value you apply to the cue ball to the object ball, you have the ability to get a sense of predictability of learning cue ball speed control. Sure, practicing defensive shots could seem boring. To most pool players, practicing at all is boring. Just ask yourself, how much do you practice? Me, as the drill instructor, I always prefer practicing at a three to one ratio. For every hour I'm gonna spend play, I'm gonna have three hours of practice behind it. And that is the ratio, the drill instructor way that works best for me. But I'm gonna show you a really cool idea that could make practicing defensive shots kind of fun. I'm gonna be using my Moab One, the Moab One, the mother of all break use, and I'm gonna be breaking the rack here. You wanna check out the Moab One at Prime Custom Cues because it is truly the best, and I designed it. Now, the name of this is called Foul Pool. If you make a ball on the break, you certainly wanna pull it up and just put it right back on the spot. The rack, as you saw, is set up like a regular nine ball game. You break like a regular nine ball game. The only difference is we're only really focusing on what happens to the cue ball and the one ball. So if any other balls are pocketed during the game, you just simply respot it back. Every incoming player is only focused on shooting at the one ball and playing safe. The real goal of this game is to cause your opponent to foul and give you ball in hand. And of course, the object is whoever can cause the opponent to foul 10 times, you're the winner. The one thing about foul pool is you're not specifically working on safety drill shots. Now, if you have my 55 defensive safety drills book and DVD, I'm teaching you exact defensive shots. So you're gonna learn a repertoire of really great shots so you could recognize 
how to play them when you see them on the table. Without knowing a repertoire of shots, you might easily miss a defensive shot. For example, I wanted to get the one ball from the top of the table back down to the bottom. Distance is my friend. Always distance is your friend when you're playing defense. Well, the result of that shot, yeah, I didn't get ball in hand, so I don't get a point. I made a good hit, but I lift my opponent wide open, and but I'm coming back, and now I'm going to play again. Here we go. There I did what I taught you earlier with a big transfer of energy. I hit that less than a quarter ball, and I got the object ball to move into the rail and come back out. Said it was probably about no more than about a two and a half diamond move. But I got the cue ball go flying all the way up the table and here. And that was at least three quarters, three to one more distance on the cue ball. My number one main concern was only going to be the speed of the one ball. If you ran your opponent racket like this three or four or five times in a row, they could start losing their head, getting a little frustrated. Don't you ever play anything else? They're off their game, and you're the one who's winning. Distance is your friend. Once again, there's that trading places shot. That one comes up a lot. Okay, so foul pull could be a really great way to make practicing defense a little bit more fun. Hey, you go to Prime Custom Cues if you want to get one of my Optimus shafts with zero deflection performance tapering technology, which is really fantastic. And of course, for the Moab Break Cue and the Elevate Jump Cue, go check those out. We got really great videos up there showing you just how well those work. Aim straight, shoot straight, split the pockets, because that's the drill instructor way. And I look forward to the next time with you. Bye-bye.